Steve Kemp for UCN Live. I'm here with Larry Merchant, and we go to Ask Larry. These are questions from Twitter from our followers, Larry. Here's one from Kamish Romero, at Blogger Boxing. Larry, after countless fights, which one stands out as your favorite? Or give us a few. Well, Ali uh, Fraser won was the greatest event I ever covered in any sport because of its worldwide social and political implications and the fact that there were two undefeated, really outstanding champions um, uh, of whom the highest, highest expectations there were imaginable and they exceeded them. Mm -hmm. You can't do better than that. But of course, over the years, there have been a lot of terrific fights, uh, um, Hagler Hearns and certainly, um, uh, you know, uh, Buster Douglas and Tyson and um, uh, many, many others. Taylor Chavez, Barrera Morales, Larry, you, your credential list is impressive. You got some good ones. <laughs> um, here's one from Cornerman, at Cornerman44. Favorite big upset you called for HBO, not named Tyson Douglas? I think that um, Tarver knocking out Jones with one punch. Mm. Uh, Jones was so highly regarded in his time that when the time ended in that way, it, it really was a, a, a shock because great champions don't normally go out that way. Great champions usually have great chins. Mm. Here's one from Robert Montano at Rob's Montano. What fighter who's 20 and 0 or under do you see making waves in the future? Is there a particular young fighter you like a lot that you say, hmm? Because I know Gilberto Ramirez became a world champion. You were high on him last year. Uh, I'm still high on Ramirez. He's He's on the shelf. So is uh, the Puerto Rican fighter. Felix Verdejo. Verdejo. Um, I think their time will come, and I think they'll have the support that will uh, um, get, get everybody through the next uh, phase of boxing. Um, I, I don't know. I like the both, the, the both Russians and, the, and, and other Russians in the, in the system. Mm -hmm. uh, Lomachenko is a, is a terrific uh, smaller fighter. Um, look, uh, there are a lot of fighters. There are a lot of winners. There are a lot of champions. But there are few stars. And I'm as curious and as hopeful as the next boxing uh, degenerate to find out uh, who's going to be the next superstar. Yeah, Larry, you mentioned the Russian Revolution, as I like to call it. There are guys coming up, like Govsek, Kavalushkas, you've seen them. Um, did you ever think that there was a time in America, Larry, that guys like Golovkin and Kovalev and Lomachenko would ever have the type of, I don't know what you call it, influence or star power that they do now in the States? Um, not in the numbers that they've had. You know, those three fighters you mentioned, once upon a time, they were the sons and grandsons of immigrants to America. Mm -hmm. uh, their fathers and grandfathers were working in the mines and in the fields and in the mills. And those kind of kids would climb their way out, mm -hmm. fight their way up. Um, and we're not having as much of that mm -hmm. a, a, as we used to. And so they're getting a toehold here, mm -hmm. and they know that in order to capture interest, they've got to fight. Right. And, um, and certainly uh, 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 Golovkin and um, Kovalev, Kovalev uh, meet those standards. Larry, here's a question from Ernesto R. At Three Stripe Zebra Three, were you ever intimidated by a boxer? Um, Personally, no, um, and um, uh, I knew when to hold them and when to fold them. <laughs> Larry, after staring down Sonny Liston the way you did, and you were not one of his great fans, was everything else easy after Big Sonny? 
Well, I liked Sonny Liston when I first met him when he came to Philadelphia. Oh, you did? Okay. When he came to Philadelphia, I sat down. He, he was smart in his own uh, street-savvy way. But over time, he couldn't handle uh, the media, and um, he was not book smart, and he didn't get it. He just thought by winning the heavyweight champion of the world, it would automatically turn him in to a hero, and he didn't know how to handle it. Uh, and th there was only one media guy he would talk to who was my boxing writer when I was sports editor in Philadelphia. So he was, he, he was a difficult case. He was angry. He, uh, he had problems wherever he went out of the ring. Um, and then when he fought Ali, he had problems in the ring. Larry, the famous relationship with Mike Tyson, who it was said basically left HBO because of you. Do you get the sense that that was more Don King using that as a front? Did you ever really feel any real animosity or anger from Iron Mike himself? You know, the way it works when you work in a network is when they signed long-time deals, mm -hmm. multi-fight deals, big money deals, in their minds, we were on their team. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. we, we were their clack. We were their followers, mm -hmm. you know. And we were supposed to put everything uh, about them in the rosiest prism, the rosiest light. And... When they had issues that exploded, as certainly Tyson did and some others, uh, when they underperformed and we reported it, uh, they weren't very happy. They said, what are, you, what are you guys doing? You're supposed to be on my side. No, you're supposed to, we're supposed to be on the side of, of, of telling people what they're seeing. But Larry, <laughs> is that allowed anymore? Do you think networks now kind of want a house message to be delivered? I think some do, um, um, because if you don't, you get a lot of incoming. <laughs> you're, you're the head of a division that the network is depending on, and suddenly promoters, managers, maybe even fighters themselves are calling and complaining. It's, it, it's like having a football team leave town, mm. if you, a franchise. And so, uh, it, they generally will recruit people uh, uh, who will uh, not try to dig too deep. Yeah, Larry, question. As someone that was on the beat, you were a writer for years, prolific one, covered people. Is it true that unless you piss somebody off once in a while with what you say or write, you're simply not doing the job properly? If, and maybe maybe both guys. Uh, uh, sure, it's it's truth to power. Uh, look, it's still a, it's still a game. Um, we're we're not reporting on on a, on a, a, a horror killing or a, a war. war. Yeah. Um, and most of the time, we love what we do, and we are in there to to uh, um, galvanize the, the show and sell the show and uh, and so forth. But when guys are getting big, big bucks and they're supposed to perform and fight and they don't, it's no different than any other form of, of, of performance. Mm -hmm. If a singer comes to, to the show and doesn't sing well <laughs> that night, uh, a lot of people are going to go home unhappy. Mm. Here's a question from War on Weakness from At War on Weakness. Larry, are you writing or will you write a book at some stage about your extraordinary life by the ring? Um, well, I did uh, put together a small collection of columns called Ringside Seat at the Circus. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I keep putting off uh, uh, um, writing a memoir. Um, um, just sitting around and thinking about it, but uh, maybe that's the work you have to put into it before you actually do it. Um, right now, I, I'm happy that uh, uh, I don't feel I have to write it. I don't feel that um, we should uh, 
chop down even three trees so that uh, a book of mine. <laughs> Larry, they have Tyndalls now. They have e-books, okay? But first of all, Larry, that book you speak of was about, which by the way, I have. That was decades ago, Larry. You could do a sequel now, okay? It's not, it's not like you're doing Star Wars. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm really talented at putting things off. And that's where I am right now. And uh, uh, that comes into the category of thinking about it. Uh, pound for pound uh, procrastinator, Larry Merchant. Larry, final question from R Duke at R underscore Duke 71. What was your reaction the first time you saw yourself in the Neil Leifer photo, the iconic one underneath or between the legs of Muhammad Ali? That I could solve world poverty <laughs> <laughs> or, 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 or uh, cancer, and uh, I would still be remembered for that photo. Yeah. <laughs> Larry, as you saw that, when the first time you saw it, did you say to yourself, oh, Leifer's got something? Like, he, he got it. No, the first moment I saw it, I said, that's the greatest sports photo ever <laughs> because, because of the story it told. Mm -hmm. It was uh, um, the story behind it. Um, maybe as t time has gone on, people don't know the whole story and what happened there in Maine. Um, but, but, I, but I and others do, and this was... Uh, uh, the cla a classic uh, f photo that that um, uh, in some way humanizes the the violence of the game and the humanity of the game at the same time. Right, and we're looking right there. That photo hangs on the wall of Mr. Merchant. Larry, when was the first time you noticed yourself? Did someone point it out to you, or did you notice yourself immediately? You know, it was interesting that Sports Illustrated at first didn't put it on the cover. It was, I believe, it was uh, inside the magazine, and I thought, "Whoa, wow!" Um, and uh, and Neil um, Leifer, who took the photo, and I became pals over the years, and um, I met him on a cruise that I was taking in the Baltic mm -hmm. a couple of summers ago. And he was on the cruise as a, a lecturer. And we hung out and he told me that for 40 years after that, he didn't realize that I was the one between <laughs> Ali's <laughs> Larry, uh, Lewiston, Maine, there was a lot of stories. I've read about it, you were there, how a lot of people were afraid to go. The, the whole specter of the Nation of Islam, that there's threats of assassinations. A lot of media members, they pulled out of covering the fight. Why did you go and were, were you ever afraid of anything happening that particular night? I'm um, a little oblivious to those kinds of stories. And I, you know, it's just like, um, there's not a bullet with my name on it out there, I keep thinking, or even one that says, to whom it may concern. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I never thought of not going uh, to that fight. And it was an amazing uh, a scene up there in, in Lewiston, Maine at a, at a resort uh, Poland's, called Poland Springs. Um, and a book could be written about that and probably has. Mm. Larry, as they say, you should be in <laughs> pictures. Larry, as always, thank you for the time. Thanks, Steve. This is Steve Kim with Larry Merchant for UCN Live.